Now we find all these people, these uh, elitists, you see, uh, are all Masons uh, and the daughters of Masons, uh, Eastern stars, who are giving you this Hindu dash Masonic religion of theirs of evolution to to the next great leap forward. Seeing these advantages of the technology, and hence seeing how poor humans are at doing certain things, and saying, well, why do we have to put up with this? Why not enhance? Why not upgrade what we are and how we do things by linking myself, for example, with that technology? Why, why can't I have extra memory? Why can't I sense the world in infrared or ultrasonics? Uh, it, it might be dangerous, but it's also tremendously exciting and opens up new opportunities. Uh, they're not hypocrites. They really believe their religion and that they have the right, being ascended over others, ascended masters, to, to dictate the direction that everyone else should go in society. Um, of course, they keep us, uh, as the profane, they call them, those in the darkness, um, because, uh, well, we just can't handle truth, you see, and, and we're too stupid to handle truth, and we couldn't make the proper decisions for ourselves. So so they, they treat us kindly, like good shepherds, and, and make all the decisions for us. Uh, Michael Gorbachev, who was the, the head of the KGB in the Soviet Union, you know those nice guys in the black outfits that, that used to kidnap people at night from their houses and torture them and kill them, and then became president of the Soviet Union, and then was picked by Maggie Thatcher to come over to London, uh, where the press uh, agreed not to ask him any nasty questions about his politics. They only talked about his new blue suits, etc., very trendy man, and uh, his, his wife's hairdos. Uh, his wife at the time explained that you could get a free facelift if you walked into a clinic in, in any Russian street, you see. It was just a, a wonderland over there, and you had abortion on demand. They couldn't give you the pill. That costs money, but you get an abortion in five minutes. Uh, that's called efficiency under the communist uh, system for the ordinary people. So Michael Gorbachev, who was eventually knighted by the Queen and became a knight of Lazarus, which is wears the temper cross only it's a green cross that's his function is to side with Maurice Strong and uh, and push the Earth Charter etc he wrote a book or at least they had it written for him it's called Michael Gorbachev The Search for a New Beginning subtitled Developing a New Civilization and he said um, the greening of politics and that's where the, the Green Party you see it was started in the, in the Soviet bloc the Green Party and, uh, in fact, it was started up by a right-hand man of, of Stalin. Uh, his daughter or granddaughter took it over and brought it to Europe. The greening of politics is an affirmation of the priority of values common to humanity, enriching education and, and upbringing with ecological cont uh, content from childhood onward and developing a new and modern attitude towards nature. At the same time, the greening of politics is a return to humankind of the awareness of humanity as a part of nature. Now, that rings a bell if you read the Biodiversity Treaty, where you have no more rights than an ant. In fact, they have more rights than you do. Uh, the moral improvement of society and the maturation of civilization is inconceivable without this. Uh, Michael goes on uh, elsewhere to talk about some um, the choices facing humankind. Today, humankind is facing a choice. It's time for every individual, nation, and state to rethink its place and role in the world affairs. We need an intellectual breakthrough into a new dimension. This is the great leap forward of masonry once again. And that means the state of the human spirit that assumes paramount importance. The roles of culture, religion, science, and education must grow enormously. The responsibility of the Centers for Humanity's intellectual, scientific, and religious development is immense and must be given preeminence. And it sure has, because we didn't have any say in the thing at all. The future of human society will not be defined in terms of capitalism versus socialism. It was that dichotomy that caused the division between the world community in the two blocks and brought about so many catastrophic, catastrophic consequences. We need to find a paradigm that will integrate all the achievements of uh, the... Let me see, turn over the pages, take them together here. Of the human mind.
mind and human action, irrespective of which ideology or political movement can be credited with them. This is the coming together of the, the heads and the tails of the coin, because they're both run by the same money men, you see. Uh, this paradigm can only be based on the common values that humankind has developed over many centuries. The search for a new paradigm should be a search for synthesis. So you had the thesis, you see capitalism, the antithesis of communism, and here's the synthesis for what is common to and unites people, countries, and nations, rather than what divides them. The search for such a synthesis can succeed if the following conditions are met. First of all, we must return to the well-known human values that are embodied in the ideals of the world religions and also in the socialist ideas, ideas that inherited much from those values. He means the Fabian society. Further, we need to search for a new paradigm of development that is based on those values and that is capable of leading us towards a generally humanistic, now remember that word, humanistic, or more precisely, humanistic, ecological culture of living. So <clears throat> humanism, of course, believes that man is God because there's nothing else, so that the, the most advanced intellectually have the right to rule over those less advanced. And ecology, of course, is to do with, with the planet and, and um, economy as well, all lumped into one. A scientific socialism is what he's talking about. He's reiterating uh, the very values that um, Bertrand Russell, H.G. Wells, and and all the rest of the Fabian society were spouting out back in the 1800s, and still do, actually. Their descendants still run uh, the Fabian society today. And he said, too, here that, um, this is Gorbachev, the philosophy of the 21st century must be grounded in the philosophy of diversity. Who have heard that before? If life is such as, the, uh, as such as the highest value, then even more precious is the singular identity of every nation and every race as a unique creation of nature and human history. At the same time, we must begin to define certain moral maxims or ethical commandments that constitute values common to all humankind. While well, you'll notice that the UN has its own version of the commandments in place, and anyone can go on to the website and see them. Um, he was on about the, the fact that we must uh, create a new religion which is based on, on earth worship, you see, earth worship. This, of course, will eventually, this is in my words, but uh, it's from the book, it's, it's the reading between the lines. Uh, earth worship takes you into uh, a controlled society, just like family planning, only it's global planning, and, and worshiping the earth. You have a dumbed-down population who probably can't read or write down in the future, and they'll be given a religion where they'll either have themselves um, voluntarily sterilized to save Mother Earth, of course, um, and to make sure there's no, no mouths that, that uh, are surplus that need feeding. And, of course, to, to so the elite won't have to bother with the ramifications of, of discontented, uh, starving people. So, um, so yes, this is the same, the same agenda. Michael Gorbachev, with his... Uh, there's a presidio down in the States there where he runs this green movement from. It's all part of the Maurice Strong's movement, and, and Maurice, of course, was picked by the Rockefellers, who are part of the same uh, version of the Fabian Society of London. Uh, the intermix with the Royal Institute of International Affairs. Uh, the American branch is the Council on Foreign Relations. And we are being managed just like animals, and they're breeding us up, breeding us down, uh, dumbing us down for sure at the moment, and they, they intend to cull us down to a manageable size and then uh, clone different types for specific functions in the near future. That way they won't need the media, sports to entertain us, and then we, we won't be wasteful of all the toys which we reward ourselves, all these little cheap things from China which don't last very long. Um, this is the, the, the basic um, system which is running our world, and you and I and the public have absolutely no say in this agenda. Recall the words of H.G. Wells, which provides a thematic underpinning of this theocracy. At first, the realization of the ineffectiveness of her best thought and knowledge struck only a few people, like Mr. Maynard Keynes, for example. It is science and not men of science that we want to enlighten and animate our politics and rule the world. This was quoted in Mind Control, World Control, pages 306 to 307, 
Unfortunately, Simon Phoenix was not coded. While you were sleeping, everyone in the city was installed code. It was a brilliant idea by Dr. Cocteau that an organically bioengineered microchip be sewn into the skin. Sensors all over the city can zero in on anyone at any time. All of the systems which are set up through non-governmental organizations, which you think are speaking out uh, as grassroots uh, organizations, speaking out for you, are actually owned and controlled by the same elite. Uh, the Rockefeller Foundation funds pretty well all of these organizations, from Greenpeace to, to you name it. And, and in reality, they're all leading us into the global village, as they call it, with the UN as the apparent authority, the front authority, with this massive bureaucracy, an interbred bureaucracy, by the way, which uh, has its own schools, and uh, that's where their children go to, the, the bureaucrats' children. And they're not taught anything about democracy or anything. They believe they are uh, administrators. They administrate to the public what we are supposed to do in this expert-controlled, scientifically designed society which they're bringing into being. And so to combat uh, the, the evils which are coming upon the world and have been on the world for an awful long time, we must think everything out anew, because traditional methods um, uh, of combating this evil don't work. We must think anew. And we're not children. Perpetual childhood is called socialism, where Big Brother or Big Daddy takes care of all your problems for you. Uh, that's why they sing, we are the world, you see. We are the children. Uh, and of course, um, I don't like being referred to as a child. I'm a thinking, adult, sentient being, and um, I resent being called a child. I'm not part of a global village either uh, that owns lock, stock, and barrel um, uh, with the UN fronting for it and all the big rich boys owning it. Um, I'm not a serf or a slave. And uh, that's how we must take this forward, it's from that point of view. Individualism is the way to overcome all of this. Uh, individual thinkers, individual thought, and that takes tolerance from other people too. Uh, the masses would like us all to be the same. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Many people love socialism and will love having the decisions made for them. But for those who do not, um, we must accept the fact that, that uh, amongst individuals there will be different opinions that's why we're individuals, and it's more exciting to have a world full of individual opinions and, and different ways of looking at things than, than a single mass outlook, a politically correct outlook on things. That's the kind of world we must work towards. Thank you.